Hey everyone, CWD Music Reviews here. I'm CWD, and this is going to be a music review of the new Run the Jewels album, Run the Jewels 3, aka RTJ3. Run the Jewels is the hip hop duo consisting of Killer Mike and LP. These guys have been on a trailblazing streak since 2013 when they dropped their debut album, RTJ. That was cool. I definitely like that album a lot. Can't say that I returned to it that often, though. There was nothing wrong with the project. It was just sounding like Killer Mike and LP getting together, trading bars, and there's some really good beats going on behind it. It sounded like kind of a one-off thing that no one really expected a continuation of. That is until the next year came, 2014, when they dropped RGJ2, and that album was fantastic. The duo sounded more cohesive. They definitely sounded like that they were legitimately working on one single song topic instead of just creating bars of their own and just laying it to tape and being done. They were legitimately in the studio working together as partners in crime. It certainly felt that way. Not only that, but as each album went by with Run the Jewels 1 and Run the Jewels 2, the beats started getting a little heavier, darker, and a lot more grittier, along with the subject matter and the delivery of both MCs. So after Run the Jewels 2, I was definitely anticipating Run the Jewels 3 coming out whenever that may be. I was really hoping it came out in 2015 so that way they could have like one single trilogy of really good albums that come out one year after another which I don't think has been done before in this vein anyway. But regardless, better late than never, we have this new album, this Run the Jewels 3, dropping late last year around Christmas Eve, Christmas time, and yeah, I definitely <laughs> listened to that a lot upon release. I, I listened to it quite a bit still, actually, given the fact that I really do think that this is easily the best thing Run the Jewels have dropped. There are like some minute low points to Run the Jewels 3, but still, this remains the apex, or Hopefully a preface to all the colossal and just outright awe-inspiring tracks and albums that they would go on to release later after this thing. This album's about 14 tracks in length. It's a little over 50 minutes. So by default, I think this makes this the longest Run the Jewels project to date, but it still feels as accessible, as exciting, as the previous two albums before this one, if not more so. As far as the production goes, LP of course has control of the beats here, and he does, once again, a fantastic job. With this album, LP is thinking big. He is thinking ginormous, gargantuan, colossal. Where Run the Jewels 1 and 2 sounded like hard-hitting hip-hop from the CD clubs of your major cities, these beats here, this overall sound that they are going for with this album, sounds like straight up arena rap. I dare say that a good chunk of these instrumentals can go toe to toe with a good chunk of the arena performers, not just in hip hop, but in music in general today. Tracks like Hey Kids, Boomaye, Thieves, and Panther Like a Panther, these are tracks that have quite a bit of foreboding and hard hitting bass to them. The latter of which, Panther Like a Panther, has like these nice, really aggressive breakbeats going on all throughout. Thieves has kind of a slow paced, but really foreboding and really colossal type bass to it. It definitely has a lot of dark synth, along with a good chunk of tracks on this album as a whole. These are bangers at their epitome or close to their epitome, certainly. If you're going to make the self-conscious decision of pretty much getting turned or getting lit to this whole album, then not only will this be the perfect soundtrack for that, but you might face heart palpitations trying to do so. The only exception of which probably being the track Down, but primarily because I feel like that's like a prologue or preface to, I guess, the darkness that the album is going to go through before it pretty much goes into straight banger stan like with the track talk to me unapologetically hard-hitting 
hands down, no question about that. I especially like the turntable scratches that are on the tail end of this track. There's a good chunk of hard hitting horns that are on this track as well as many other tracks here. Like, Legend has it, a report to your shield holders, kill your masters, which is one of my favorite tracks on the record. There's just not a single beat here that I dislike or think is less than hard hitting, less than gritty. LP, along with the help of some co-producers like Boots and Lil Shalimar, he just does a fantastic job all throughout this album, and I can't think of anything negative to say about any of it. I'll say that maybe Hey Kids has the bass so loud and hard hitting that it kind of sort of overbears on Danny Brown's verse on the track, which is actually pretty fantastic. But still, even then, I have no complaints about it. I'm just pretty much in awe of the instrumental aspect of what Run the Jewels are working with. Now, as far as the rap deliveries and the lyricism goes, this is really cool too. Now, if you're not in the know about Run the Jewels, you have Killer Mike, who has like a strong southern vibe to his delivery. He definitely is of Atlanta. Represent. His voice is really gritty, it's direct, his lyricism is as gritty and direct as his vocals can be. He gets really political and sociopolitical throughout a good chunk of these tracks here. And LP, he is from the opposite side of the US, New York, and he definitely has that kind of accent about him. LP's delivery and his lyrics, it's pretty much as hard-hitting as Killer Mike, which I think he has kind of developed all throughout the duration of Run the Jewels' existence. I actually remember him being not as upfront as he is now on this album, and I think that's quite an improvement on his part. As far as his lyricism goes, once again, yeah, he is getting more direct on this project, but he is pretty much one of the more abstract and borderline absurd from the duo. He's got some golden lines like, I have a unicorn horn for a cock. I'm like dirt, I can't be crushed, I'm doing push-ups naked on side of cliffs, and probably my favorite line from him all throughout the course of the album, causing so much stress like Orson Welles on the radio. Yeah. Good chunk of the track, it's pretty much them bragging about the status of Run the Jewels and the direction of Run the Jewels, because that's pretty much the mission statement of Run the Jewels. We take no prisoners, we've got a lot to say about how the system sucks, and we kick ass they once again fulfill on that statement. Especially on tracks like Talk To Me and Legend Has It, as well as Call Tigatron, which is pretty peculiar. The track having this Life in the Garden hook going on for it. I guess kinda talking about the progression in popularity that the guys are going into. That's the way I'm interpreting it, I could be wrong. Just all throughout the course of this album, Killer Mike and LP are absolutely just killing it. Now as far as the lyrical topics goes, this is probably the most political of all of them. Especially the track 2100, which has Boots on the hook, and like with the previous album, Boots is one of the better deliveries. This definitely fits a post-election world we are living in at the moment as we have now selected our new master for president. Regardless of who it is that actually won the White House, this is definitely an anthem for everyone to get down to. Pretty much Mike noting that it's too clear that nuclear is too near, as well as LP pretty much offering his support and love for those that are feeling downtrodden in during this time. And there's quite a few people that are, and I think that will resonate with a lot of people, certainly. I like the track Thieves a lot, too, how it's pretty much about the escalation and progression of a riot. And how it's pretty much sad that the media just doesn't understand riots, and how they clearly don't want to. They just show up when the riot actually happens, instead of showing up and reporting on the things that are going on that probably bubbled up into a riot. Riots do not arise from thin air. So goes the sample of Martin Luther King Jr. on the tail end of this track. I also like the track Thursday in the Danger Room, which seems to be both MCs reflecting on someone they have lost in their lifetime. Namely Killer Mike, certainly, where he talks about this child that grew up without a father because his father was killed because of a chain he was wearing. And certainly the closing track is definitely the perfect closer to this particularly sociopolitical record. 
with LP talking about how he went into Run the Jewels trying to just make some bucks and cause some laughs. Pretty much just art for art's sake, but now he realizes that Run the Jewels has accumulated into this mission statement of some sort, and now he is going to certainly do his part in, in keeping this mission statement as well as this awareness of all that's going on in the world going. This is all in the first half of the track. Killer Mikey definitely has a lot to say about what happened after the election and pretty much getting introspective about his involvement with the Bernie Sanders campaign. One moment in particular, he pretty much notes the time he said that having a uterus isn't an instant qualification of being President of the United States, and people misconstrued that to saying that Killer Mike is a misogynist. He pretty much criticized the media for twisting his words around. I thought that was pretty interesting. So I've got no complaints about the lyricism here, or the subject matter for that matter. They're definitely upping their game in terms of production and lyricism, and even flow, certainly. They definitely are, once again, working together quite cohesively, even sharing flows like on Legend Has It, like on Hey Kids and Stay Gold. My issue, though, then becomes maybe the features aren't as memorable as Run the Jewels 2, but they're still particularly good. Like Danny Brown, Danny Brown definitely kills on the track Hey Kids. Boots, like I said, does a really good job on the hook. You got the front man of TV on the radio on Thieves that has a pretty cool little sung verse on the tail end of the track. And as a surprise, Zach De La Rocha makes another appearance on the latter half of A Report to Your Shareholders, Kill Your Masters. And once again, he absolutely destroys the track, and I love it. I'm pretty curious as to what Zach De La Rocha's solo album is going to sound like in the future if that is indeed on the rise. And you have like Kamasi Washington, of all people, lending some really cool and pretty somber saxophone on this track here. I think some of it actually gets kind of thick, or maybe that's just LP misconstruing the sound into his own conception, which I think is pretty cool, on the track Thursday in the Danger Room. But that's kind of it, and yeah, that's most of them, but I think Run the Jewels 2 had more consistency within the features. There's a whole eclectic list of features on that project, and I think it was more consistent on 2 than it was 3, but that's kind of a minute uh, little nitpicking there. And I guess while I'm at that, with the whole nitpicking thing, I think they do need to work on writing hooks a little better, because at times I th feel like the hooks like drag. I think Run the Jewels are better at making instrumental breaks in the placement of hooks than they do actually having like a legitimate hook. I mean, the hooks are okay, they're pretty good, and they're definitely serving their purpose as something catchy and memorable. I just was hoping that they'd be a bit more hard-hitting and just undeniably good. I do like the hook on Everybody Stay Calm, which has like this take it easy, easy, easy thing going on that I do dig quite a bit. But tracks like Talk To Me, tracks like Legend Has It, and to an extent tracks like Hey Kids, these don't really have like hooks per se, just like instrumental breaks. Pretty much memorable in their own right because that's just how good of a producer LP is. So in the placement of that you have tracks like Down and Hey Mama that yeah they have hooks but they don't really mesh all that well with the hard hitting energy that Run The Jewels just particularly execute well. Other than that, I love the shit out of this thing. Apart from some minute details that could use some tweaking with the next album, there's literally nothing negative I can say about this album. The beats are fantastic. The flows are fantastic. On the jewels are spitting bars that are fantastic. And the features, while not the strongest thing about the album, are, for the most part, pretty fantastic as well. This is just a fantastic album. I think that this is pretty much the nail to the coffin to what's left of the skepticism towards Run the Jewels. Because on Talk To Me, I sympathize with Killer Mike's hype on the tail end of the track, where he's all like, I told you on RTJ1, RTJ2, you still don't believe me, so we're gonna do this shit again. And I think it's pretty fantastic that the results 
are gonna go the way Killing Mike feels like it's gonna go. If you didn't like one or two, then this should be the album for you then, you know? If you somehow slept on the past two Run the Jewels projects, then you really need to wake up and listen to three. So that way you can actually realize the greatness and the ambition of Run the Jewels. This album is a plus 2.5 out of plus 3. Their best album to date, please check it out. But if you give this album a listen, what you think of it? Did you like this album? Did you dislike this album? What was the reason for that? And what should I consider listening to and reviewing next? The CW Music Reviews here, signing off.